My name is Daryl Potter, and I have been in the Foundations of Educational Research class all summer with you all, and I'm excited today to um, go over my research project for this semester. Um, and the topic that I'm looking at is the effects of undergraduate student uh, first impressions on the university retention rates. And so um, I'm going to go ahead and dive in to start sharing this with you. All right, so as far as my introduction goes, one of my resources, um, Barbera from 2020, shows that there are a variety of factors that are going to affect um, retention rates. Um, you can see those listed here. Um, there is another research study from Bayan Pan that um, specifically um, goes into depth on uh, first year in, uh, intervention programs, like the first year experience programs and for academic advisement. Now, for my topic, no research has been found. Um, like I couldn't find any research as I was going through this class that addresses the impact of first impressions on a student's retention rate. Um, and so because of that gap, my purpose is I want to monitor how a first impression um, changes from semester to semester as a student goes throughout their college experience. And in addition, I want to see if there's a correlation between that first impression and ultimate like student retention. All right, so as a continuation of my introduction, um, when we look at retention, we're looking from the year-to-year -year retention as well as looking at graduation rates. Um, my audience is going to be people who work at a university capacity, people like um, orientation counselors or admissions counselors or academic advisement. Um, additionally, people who work closely with universities, so those who maybe are investors or those who are members of state regent boards. All right, and so diving into kind of the meat of this presentation, what we've got is we've got two primary research questions. The first is, how does a university orientation process affect a student first impression, okay? And then our second question um, is, how does student first impression of a college um, or university affect retention? So we're looking at first impressions, we're looking at retention. Those are our two big topics for my, my research today. All right, so, um, kind of going into my um, sources from my lit review. I did mention a couple of those previously. However, we have these three um, sources. There's Al-Jalhani, uh, Al Austin, and Reason. And basically, these, you can kind of see a general summation of their research, but these all look at statistical data and provide diagrams uh, for retention uh, models. Okay? And so, kind of moving on into my next group that I've categorized. So, We've got uh, Sabharwa and Gairin, um, and these ones are going to focus on factors that affect um, student dropping out. Um, and Gairin looks at um, basically the profile for um, students who drop out from college. All right, and so now the next batch of um, sources that I want to share, these are the ones that really um, go in depth into um, orientation processes. And so, Perrine and Spain from 2008, um, they basically show that um, students perceived orientations as helpful, but didn't really seem to have an impact on retention. Um, Cambridge and Williams from 2013 showed that students who um, attended orientations had higher levels of peer learning and help seeking. And then Stowey and Gribbing from 2020, they um, recognize that there's a positive correlation between uh, preparedness and retention, and students who went to these student orientations um, were deemed to be more prepared. Okay, and so kind of diving into our next part, um, we're going to talk about the hypothesis. Now, the important thing with the hypothesis that we have to know is that when we are doing this type of research, we need to have a null hypothesis. Now, what that means is when we're going into research, we want to be neutral, we want to be unbiased, and so in my case, my null hypothesis is going to be that there will not be a correlation between a student first impression and the student's retention. That is that that first impression isn't going to positively or negatively affect um, whether or not they stay at the university. Okay, And so moving over into my key variables and sampling technique, I'm actually going to do sampling technique first. Um, and so basically um, for the pool of students that I'm going to choose, um, it's going to be limited um, to students who are going through 
the university orientation process. That's going to be students starting their first year of college and going through orientation. And then the sampling is going to be random as um, for the purpose of this study, the survey would be offered to all students. However, um, it is going to be completed at a student's discretion and there's nothing that's going to obligate students to take this, okay? And so um, my next section that we have is my key variables. And so we're going to be using an exploratory sequential design. Now, the qualitative data is going to come first and it's going to be done through primarily surveys. Now, um, these surveys are going to be done at the end of the orientation process or maybe in the week to follow the orientation process. And ultimately what we want to see is what went well and what didn't. Um, we're going to record satisfaction levels and additionally retention data is going to need to be collected over time. And we'll go into this a little more in depth in a bit. Next we're going to look at methods of data analysis. Now we mentioned students doing the surveys previously and so one of the things to note is that their responses will be on a, a scale of a 1 through 10. And so we need a way to code these as positive or negative. And so um, a score of a 1 to 4 on the survey questions is going to result in a negative scoring. A score of a 5 through 7 is going to be seen as neutral. And then a score of an 8 to 10 is going to be a, a positive score. Now, how are we going to actually analyze this data? We are going to utilize a t-chart um, to analyze data at uh, three different checkpoints or three different periods in time. Now, the first of these is going to be after that first year. So it's essentially going to be that summer um, or second fall um, from the freshman year to the sophomore year. And this is a common, uh, common dropout point. And so that's why this is the first one that we're going to use. Uh, the second point is going to be after four years. This is going to be the traditional standard graduation time frame. All right. And then the last one is going to be after six years because um, having worked in advisement and um, other studies show that the new norm for completion of a graduation or of a bachelor's degree is at the six year mark. And so these are going to be the three time frames that we use to analyze. Now, something that is important to note is that qualitative data will also be used However, it will um, be used to address concerns with current orientation processes and work on making suggestions on how to improve them. Now, this data is going to be most important to those who organize um, and control the um, orientation processes. So, um, or, like orientation teams or vice presidents or even investors who um, give to uh, contribute to these processes. Okay, so next we want to look at the limitations and the implications. And so the first limitation is that participation is not required. It is optional, and there's nothing to incentivize students to, uh, to participate in these surveys. Now, the other limitation is the scope. This particular uh, study is going to focus on standard traditional incoming freshmen. And so there are going to be pockets of the population that are left out of this, which include international students or which also include um, transfer students. Now, with regard to the implications, there are uh, institutions that don't believe that freshman uh, orientation programs are beneficial and therefore don't want to contribute funding uh, to these programs. Now, if my study does discover that they're not only beneficial, but that they are, uh, that orientation programs are influential in increasing student retention, maybe more universities would be willing to contribute more funding to such programs. And then this could be the first type of study that does address the need for orientation programs and even on a global scale. Now, if it is determined that first impressions do impact retention, then future studies can be done to figure out how to improve orientation processes to make better first impressions. All right, to close off, I'm gonna share my references with you. Um, and I just wanted to say um, I appreciate you taking the time to watch and to listen and just um, know that I've really enjoyed and learned a lot from being in this class. Thank you very much.